So, one of the things that I don't like is Perla. People equal round, a reactive to light and accommodation. Perla. It's an abbreviation that is going to appear in many charts in hospitals in the city and across the country and perhaps even across the globe. The reason I don't like it is pupil equal round reactive to light and accommodation has no assessment of the three pieces that we need. We need to measure the pupil response and check for anisocoria. That is true. But we have to check in the light and also in the dark. So it should be pearl, duh, duh. And we need to be looking at the near reaction. And even though it's called perla, accommodation is the change in the shape of the lens that occurs when we accommodate from distance to near. And really what we're trying to test is the synkinetic response to a, to a target that's at near. So we're not really testing their accommodation when we're testing their pupil. We're testing their response to light and near. And that is called light near dissociation when there's a difference between the light and the near response. And finally, we have to have some assessment of the relative afferent pupillary defect. So literally, you could have a patient who is perla and have an anisocoria in the dark. And the thing we're looking for there is a Horner syndrome. So you could be perla and have a Horner's. You could also be pearl and have a light near dissociation, and we need to be able to test the near. And you could have perla, a pupil that's equal round reactive to light and accommodation, and has an RAPD, a relative afferent pupillary. And so when we're looking at pupils, we need to test both in the light and in the dark, and then we have to swing the flashlight for a relative afferent pupillary defect. So when we have a normal pupil, if we shine the light into this right pupil, both pupils will constrict. And that's because there's both a direct response to light and a consensual response in the fellow eye. So when we have a direct response, the pupil will constrict, but also that will be felt by the contralateral pupil because the innervation to the anti-arrestral nucleus is bilateral. Likewise, if we swing the light from the right pupil to the left pupil, the constriction will be maintained. There might be a little bit of difference while you're swinging, but basically we're going to be swinging from the right to the left and then back to the right. And if we see that the pupil dilates when we swing to the left eye, that means the direct response in this left pupil is less than the consensual response from the right pupil. And that we call a relative afferent pupillary defect. Because relative to the fellow eye, the afferent system in the pupil pathway has been damaged. And what's interesting is both pupils are actually dilating when you swing the light from the right to the left in a patient who has a left RAPD. So if we're asked the question, which pupil dilates in a left RAPD, when we swing the light from the normal right pupil to the abnormal left pupil, most residents will say the left pupil dilates, which is true, but the correct answer is both pupils are dilating because they're connected, and so both pupils will dilate. And so when we have a RAPD on the left, we need to do the swinging flashlight test. Likewise, if you have a poorly reactive pupil to light, we need to check both the near reaction and the light reaction because you cannot tell whether that's an efferent problem, there's something wrong with the iris, or an afferent problem, there's something wrong with the light sensing of the optic nerve on that side. And so when we have bilateral pupils that are both dilated and poorly reactive to light, we want to test both the light and the near reaction. The near reaction is determining light near dissociation. And so the point of this talk is basically to try and convince you not to use PERLA. We need to test all three pathways, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic pathway, light and dark, and we're going to record the pupil size in the light and the dark. We're going to test the near reaction, especially if the light reaction is impaired, looking for light near dissociation of the pupils. And we're going to swing the flashlight from the right to the left and from the left to the right to detect if there's a defect in the pupil pathway 
on the afferent side relative to the fellow eye. And you should remember that both pupils dilate when we swing from the normal pupil to the abnormal pupil in a patient who has a RAPD. And that's because both the direct and the concentral response are connected and bilateral.